Uh, with us, Robert Allen Feldman, Morgan Stanley, one of the great watchers of uh, Japan out of MIT. How many, how many years have you lived in Tokyo? Uh, 20 plus straight. Now. 20 plus straight, and I mean completely involved in the society and in the debate. I am dying to ask you, for all Americans, Give us the insight we need to know about this tragedy at Fukushima that we're not seeing in the media, that we're not seeing in the coverage. What do we need to know about this just unique, original tragedy? I think, first of all, it's a horrible tragedy for everyone involved. Uh, we don't have six degrees of separation. We have one. Everybody has someone who is involved directly in this tragedy, so it is hit into the hearts of, of the people. They're scared about their future. Uh, they don't see uh, whether the economy is really going to be recovering in the long run. It's a major psychological shock. You and I have talked about the divide between those older of Japan with the memories of World War II and the earlier, uh, the more present of Japan. And mm -hmm. within that, with, within that, um, when, you, when you look at this divide, has that divide narrowed with this crisis? Is it more of a coalesced Japan? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the uh, crisis has brought people together in the sense that uh, we need to do something to make sure the country does have a secure future. That has a number of aspects to it. There's a fiscal issue uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in front of us. We already have huge fiscal deficits. And now we have to do some rebuilding. We have a young, old generational problem. Uh, most of it's these... It's still there. It's very, very much still there. I think the young people in Japan have now uh, shown themselves to be very civic-minded. Many, many college students went up to the affected areas to try to help out immediately. Mm -hmm. But then over the longer term, we still have the issue with power. Uh, Japan is an energy importer. Uh, the strategy in Japan, as elsewhere, has always been uh, to replace fossil fuels with nukes. Uh, after this accident, that's much harder mm -hmm. to do, and that's a global problem, too. The chart, let's call it the Feldman chart, which it is. It's all the work of Robbie Feldman. Uh, Mr. Keynes, meet Mr. Solo, and it's just Japan nominal GDP, and it's just a remarkable mm -hmm. chart. Mm -hmm. This rollover, this lassitude in the animal spirit. When does this change? Uh, this changes when there is some expectation that the uh, country will start growing again in nominal terms. Uh, I think uh, this uh, line that I've uh, uh, brought up about Keynes meeting solo is really a, an issue about uh, bringing growth strategy into the fiscal debate. Mm -hmm. uh, in Japan... Robert and, Solo of your MIT versus yes. John Maynard Keynes of 1936. Yes. Um, the uh, uh, issue with uh, the fiscal debate in both our countries now, in Japan and the United States, is that the debate is framed in terms of do we raise taxes or do we cut spending? That's certainly part of the debate, but it's not, to me, even the most important part. The really important part is how do we get growth moving again? That's an issue of productivity growth. It's an issue of cheaper energy. It's an issue of R&D. It's an issue of better uh, spending allocation between uh, uh, types of spending that uh, encourage growth, those mm -hmm. that don't. So I think the growth debate uh, is uh, probably missing from the fiscal uh, debate in both countries. Here's a Morgan Stanley note here. Mr. Keynes, I love this. Mr. Keynes, meet Mr. Solo, the great growth, the great giant of growth economics, Robert Solo, sustaining any fiscal reform program requires GDP growth that offset the fiscal contraction. There's that fiscal drag. Weakening the yen would be the method of increasing foreign demand. That's path one year, mm -hmm. the yen versus JGB worries. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, the fiscal issue in Japan, of course, is terrible. They've got 200% uh, of GDP of fiscal uh, debt. Uh, however, to get out of that, either they do it the right way or they do it the wrong way. Either path, the yen weakens first. Uh, say they do it the right way, that is raising uh, nominal GDP growth, getting productivity growth going, uh, that will weaken the yen because it requires uh, a more mm -hmm. aggressive monetary policy. If they do it the wrong way, that is, uh, wait and wait and wait, let deflation go, then the JGB right. market blows up. But the Forex will see that first. It's just fascinating. Earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, I spoke with a laureate, Michael Spence of NYU, and I asked him his advice mm -hmm. that he would take from John Hicks. What advice would he take from the late 30s and early 40s and pull it forward to President Obama? I think Sir John would say that the president really has to decide what his economic objectives are, listen to all the advice he can get, and then lay out a program that's designed to restore some sense of balance in the short to medium term, but a, a kind of, you know, rosier future in terms of growth and employment in the long run. And he, I think he has to do it himself. It has to be his. He has to feel it deeply and own it. I would say John Hicks is the economist of the moment, the 1972 laureate at a very uh, older age. Michael Spence, uh, learning under him at Oxford, we're literally bringing 1930s economics forward. Are you doing that in your own work? 
Well, I'm trying to do that. Uh, certainly, uh, the reference to Keynes, uh, along with Solow, whose greatest work uh, or initial work was in the 1950s. Those things really need to be put together as uh, various parts of economic theory come together. I think uh, what uh, uh, Professor Spence just said about setting objectives is also extremely important of this, because you can't get a democratic country to focus on getting the policies right unless there is a clear, broadly accepted uh, objective, like Koizumi did with the postal reform. You need a Koizumi, uh, I can't pronounce it, excuse Koizumi, me. Yes. Koizumi, you need a Koizumi in Japan. Here's why, look at this chart. Robbie, this blew me away. Nominal GDP with a one-year, five-year, 10-year moving average, and there's that zero line they're straddling. The blue and the yellow line are just below the 0% mark, the white line a little bit above. It's just a remarkable malaise. Do I have that right? Yes, it is. And I think it's come about in part because of some of the political uh, 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 stasis in, in the country, which in part is due to the aging, but it's also due to the electoral system itself. Uh, the electoral system is, in Japan overweights uh, the votes of older uh, people just because of the of his historical uh, accident. Mm -hmm. uh, and there actually just was a Supreme Court ruling ordering the diet to um, to change that the way Baker versus Carr did in the United States in the early 60s. So there there is uh, some hope uh, that those electoral system components mm -hmm. that have generated this malaise right. may change sometime soon. Let's go show you a chart here, folks. Lisa just mentioned this, and this blue is two deviations of vol, but I've adjusted the top. This is the Italian 10-year, and this hockey stick over here is 3.5 standard deviations. That's all you need to know. That's a medical chart. That's a big move and shows that instability uh, in Italy. I want to take all of your economics away from Japan. How crippled is Europe because they don't have the flexibility of currency that the Japanese have? Well, I think the European financial system uh, problems have to be viewed in terms of what happened in Japan. I identified for Japan five things that are important for judging whether a country is or a system is on track or not. First, is there a growth strategy to get growth going again? Uh, secondly, is there a safety net uh, to keep the economy going? Mm -hmm. Third, are are there capital injections into institutions that need them with appropriate conditionality? Fourth, is there public support for the system uh, or for the, uh, uh, the uh, initiative? Right. And fifth, uh, is there strict asset assessment? Those are the things that Japan had to get and finally, after a decade, did get together that generated a real recovery in the Japanese financial system. I don't see all of those uh, coming together in Europe yet. Very nice summary. Let's look at another part of this note here. I love this. Mr. Keynes. Minas de Solo, the working age population will shrink over the next decade, hence raising the productivity of remaining workers is essential. This goes back, Robbie Feldman, to this idea of, of, of growth. you got to have growth to at least match that interest rate buildup on yes. debt, don't you? You absolutely do. How much do we need in the United States? Uh, I haven't calculated the numbers in the U.S., but since we have immigration in the U.S., since population growth is still okay, uh, getting a reasonable growth rate in the U.S. to me suggests productivity growth rate of one and a half to two, something on that order, mm -hmm. is probably okay. I stand to be corrected by U.S. economists. Debt build up. Here it is. Elegant chart. Bring it up here. The yen will weaken first. Forget about JGB analysis. Dr. Feldman saying we'll see it in yen. There's the Japan build up off the normalized 100 level and you can see there the U.S. Uh, build up. The same slope but a, a, a little better in the United States. How do you respond to economists who say we don't need to worry yet because interest rates are low like Japan? I think that's not correct. Uh, this is not something that uh, will uh, give us a lot of um, a lot of time to, to get ready for when it starts to happen. I think we uh, need to uh, build our house of bricks before uh, anything uh, bad uh, comes along. So to me, the key thing is if you want to lower that debt level, you've got to make sure that you've got the denominator, that is the GDP growth number going, uh, so that you've got time to bring the, uh, the politics of spending and taxes into line. Uh, bring up the Krugman op-ed, if you would, Rex. Please uh, want to look at this, folks, from Paul Krugman today. This is, of course, off the Friday jobs report, this idea of do something, no we can't or won't, listening to what serious people, he usually capitalizes that, say about the economy, you'd think the problem was no we can't. The reality is no we won't. Every pundit Mm -hmm. except Robert Feldman, who mm -hmm. reinforces that destructive passivity is part of the problem. There's this wonderful, mm -hmm. this 
push for action, just do mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. As you look at this crisis four years on, what is the top of your to-do list for politicians? Uh, my top uh, of the to-do list uh, for uh, politicians basically is to, again, work on the productivity uh, agenda. Uh, this is something that uh, is really much more important in the wake of the Fukushima uh, uh, nuclear accidents uh, because essentially the world is facing an energy problem that is much more serious than I think people have realized. Uh, there is not, uh, prospectively on the numbers I've seen, uh, really enough fossil fuel around to uh, keep us going for the next 50 years. So we've got to get alternatives. Uh, nukes are now not as attractive as they were, so we've got to work on the solar, on uh, the other op data I thought was so uh, important from the Princeton professor, mm -hmm. uh, the one about the nuclear fusion. Every energy technology needs to be worked on. So that's the thing that's the top of my agenda. I want to go back to the, the personal part. We all have our stereotypes of Japan. It may be lost in translation mm -hmm. at the top of the Hyatt Hotel, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It may be that wonderful train ride to Kyoto. Mm -hmm. If you, I was to go 74 miles mm -hmm. inland from Tokyo mm -hmm. to a home, mm -hmm. the couples 45 and 50, what would they what would mm -hmm. they say? What would they say? They would say they're worried about their future. Uh, because they see their country uh, uh, losing uh, international status. Mm -hmm. They're worried about their own jobs. Uh, they're worried about uh, their uh, children. Uh, they're worried about their parents as well, because who's going to take care of the old, uh, uh, the right. old age? So there's a lot of worries out there. Oh. there. You would not hear a message of hope. Thank you so much in your schedule for visiting today. Robert Feldman in from Tokyo with Morgan Stanley.